Hello my friends. Today's video will be a response to my buddy again, Ragin. Very, very good question. So as usual, I'm gonna read his I'm gonna read his question and um, answer it. So have you ever found yourself bored with a language which you have made midway progress with? How do you get over that hump? I want to start studying another language, but I don't want to move on until I'm finished with the current language. Very, very good question, and I'm sure this has happened with a lot of other language learners, including myself. Um, for example, when I started getting into a lot of languages, I noticed that um, I, was, I was studying one for a certain period of time, and I started to become bored uh, with the language. So what happened was I totally dropped it. I dropped that language and I, and I started studying a language that I want to focus more on. And I think this is, this is a bad idea, especially if you set goals for um, certain languages. Um, if you say, let's say for example, you're studying something like Mandarin, okay, and you say you want to get to at least an upper intermediate level or advanced, something around there, um, but you, you end up stopping. And you you don't you're not even it's not even in your non-active group or whatever you just completely stop studying and you went to something else. I think it will take longer for you to reach those goals, especially if you're a beginner. So um, it's always good to find a way to where you can start on another language but keep that one active. And um, what I'm doing now, um, this is something new. I've talked about this in some other videos I made. I um, I have a non-active group and, a, and an active group. Now these are just my definitions of this uh, active and non-active. Like what I consider active is when you're doing everything, and that's reading, listening, uh, writing, um, and speaking. Especially speaking, since I put a strong emphasis on this. Um, if speaking isn't involved, then I don't consider it really a full-time active language. It will be in a non-active group. So in my active group. I will do my reading, do my listening, uh, my writing, and then I will do some, um, get some oral practice in. I may go to a restaurant or a store, make some videos on YouTube. All of that is part of my spoken practice, pronunciation practice, all that good stuff. Now, if it's a non-active language, only thing I'm doing with a non-active language is just reading, uh, listening, and writing. And that's it. That, that's it. No videos where I'm practicing spoken. Um, no going to places to uh, like stores or restaurants to practice the language. It's just all input. And um, it, there are a lot of people out there that do this. They take this approach where they don't speak with anyone. They just they spend a certain amount of time um, just doing input. And then later on they start getting out there speaking with people. So it's a good thing to do. And um, you could you could try this if you if you just make an active group and make a non-active group. Then if it's a, if there's a language that you have set goals for but you haven't met them yet but you're getting bored, you want to maybe what you could do is take that language and put it in your um, take that language and put it in and put it in your non-active group and in whatever language you're interested in, put that in your active group. Okay, and this this is just what I would do if I were, if I were you. Okay, and you won't be neglecting that language, that Mandarin. You won't be you won't be neglecting it because you're doing something with it. If you're not doing anything, it's just completely not active. Then that's not good. But as long as you have something going on, that language, listening, reading, if you you'll be fine. So um, that's what I would do. Um, I'm not sure what uh, other people would do, but I found this to be very effective because there are languages that I'm interested. Like for example, now I have. My active languages are um, Cantonese, let's see, Cantonese, French, Spanish, German, um, and Estonian. Those are my five active languages, you see. And then, but there are other languages like um, um, Croatian, um, Irish. Those type of languages I found interesting in them. So I just put those in. I just put those in the non-active, and I just do listening, reading, writing. That's it. That's all I do for those languages. So, um, what do you guys do? What are you guys' suggestions for our friend Rogging here? If you get bored, do, do you guys get bored with, like, if you're studying, uh, say, like, four or five languages, 
do you, are you guys do you guys find yourself getting bored with the language wanting to study another language if so what are you doing to get over that hump as he mentioned here so like I said that's what I would do I would just make two groups put um, just keep with, with the language that you started studying you set goals for keep that if you getting tired of it you're getting bored you want to try something else out take that out of the active list put it in a non-active and then put the the new one in the active and go you know and just see how that works it works for me and it may work for you so that's it for this video um, like I said if there are any other people out there with the same problem and you 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 come up with a good solution let us hear about it um, otherwise I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for viewing